So this is my story. One, what is one, who is one? One is strong, unwavering with goals in mind. One is independence, yet loneliness. One was alone, alone, until he was saved by his own. Those who valued him more than just a presence, but as a member, a member of a family. One served, one sacrificed for which he loved because he was loved. <coughs> now he finds opportunity to be the one, the one who will strive to let no one feel alone, but more welcome in our home. One, who is he standing in the present? Name's Ian Atienza, and I'm ready to be your friend. So I have handouts um, just because it takes me like more than 30 seconds to uh, discuss the credentials and I don't think I want to focus on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, honestly throughout the past three years I've held uh, three officer positions and uh, they, have, they have led me to this point. Uh, and I just want to say that throughout my th uh, three years as a member and as an officer, I want to say that I have honestly established so many deep connections. Um, I can say that I found my best man at my wedding and my um, godparents for my children um, out of this club and I really strive to make sure that each and every person um, in this club can have that experience and have that depth with each relationship, feel welcomed and feel like they are part of this family. Um, I have noticed that all the people I've met have motivated me, challenged me, and strengthened me, and I really want to be those three things for all of you guys. Thank you. As both of you are nursing majors, I understand that both of you are incredibly busy. How will you balance the duties as president as well as um, I would say that um, I'm pretty organized in the sense that I schedule my day by hour um, and I've already set out my obligations for next year, um, UFC being one of them, um, regardless of holding position, I'm going to be dedicating myself to this club um, and really realizing that my nursing career is only successful with my UFC family motivating me to do my best. So thank you. Um, for me, um, sorry, can you repeat the question? As, um, as both of you are nursing majors, I understand that both of you are incredibly busy. How will you balance the duties as president as well as your major? So for me, UFC is like a huge part of my life and I've sacrificed so much for it. Um, If there's only one time in your life that you have an opportunity to do something like this, and this is that opportunity, and I take very, I prioritize it, you know, sometimes even more than school, which is sad to say, but it's because my experience is so valuable to me, and how I stand here today, I definitely wouldn't be the same person. So, um, what needs to get done, it'll get done, I promise. Um, I'm going to ask another one for the crowd. Um, the question was, uh, leaders know what a leader looks like. Who is your greatest non-family leadership role model? Why? And what can you practically or principally take from them and have to apply to leadership? non-family leadership role model and why and what can you practically or principally take from them um, and then have to apply that to leadership so basically with this role model that you choose to explain to us um, what part of them do you look up to and how will you use that to further leadership I think all of my mentors um, and colleagues throughout the years um, out of all of them I would say that my supervisor 
um, who just left turning nine. Um, she is one of my the people that I look forward to um, in speaking with because she um, really has the same philosophy as me when it comes to leadership. Um, it's really upholding the personal narratives of every member, every person that she encounters. Um, in order to really, really be a leader, you need to know um, how people interact and their experiences and what has led them to the point in their life. Um, you need to know, you need to figure out their weaknesses and what, um, what their strengths are through that experience um, and how they identify. So one thing that she really, really um, spoke to me about was um, just making sure that every encounter is one that is valued. Um, and I think as president um, and assuming a leadership position, um, you really need to be able to step back with a person um, and enable them to reflect on their lives as well as you widening your scope of um, understanding others and understanding yourself. Because I noticed that with me personally, um, all the people in this club have especially Dana um, throughout this barrio year, uh, has challenged me to really understand myself uh, as an individual, making sure that I am taking care of myself before I can take care of others. Um, and it's something that I didn't really realize until this year when um, she would just ask me about what, what is my experience and what are my challenges, you know? Um, and how can I better be there for others? And it was to be there for myself, you know? Um, so being able to understand the personal narrative from each person that you encounter. For me, my biggest non-family role model would have to be Russell Wilson. Um, I mean, you just have to think about it. Um, he came from nowhere, and now he's from now he's a quarterback for the Super Bowl winning team. And what does it take to get to where he is now? <coughs> it's hard work, and that's what I pride myself in doing. Um, I didn't start with a lot in the, as a family. I probably consider myself like lower middle class as a family. And all three of us, my parents and myself, had to work to, work to get to where um, we are today. And so what Russell Wilson does um, inspires me. Um, and more than anything, he's a quarterback of a football team. That means nothing <coughs> without the team. You can't be a quarterback without no one to protect you, no one to throw the ball to, no one to rely on. And so, um, very team-oriented, very family-oriented, um, that's where I draw my passion. Um, so the question that I have for you guys, um, just a little background, definitely with any position um, that you'll ever take in your life, um, especially if it's over a year, then it's a time to grow. And I definitely know that I personally am a different person than um, even just as the barrio chair last year. So my question for you is, <laughs> What is a characteristic you believe a president should have, but you personally lack or do not strongly exhibit? And what will you do to develop that characteristic for the president position? I think for me it's timeliness. I know we, you just asked a question about, um, you know, both of us being our senior years, both of us having a full schedule. And so, both of us are gonna be seniors. It's, start, it's time to be to act and to start to become professionals. And so what does that mean? That means you need to start getting ahead of things, start getting ahead of the ball. And for me personally, I've either been last minute or right on time. And I mean, it's worked, for, it's worked out for the most part, but I understand that now entering a position of professional, not only as a student, but now Going into a professional career, it's something that I need to uh, get on the ball on and really get on top of. And I will say that it's slowly improving, slowly getting there. So, timeliness and being ahead. I think um, one thing that uh, a president should have is definitely the ability to. Um, have a backbone and, a, um, and always uphold yourself with really uh, a strong demeanor, I guess. Um, and one thing that I really struggle with is um, being discouraged because of um, adversity or um, because a, an event didn't like or didn't play out the way I wanted it to. Or um, for example, for Barrio this year, um, it really took a toll on me to see that. Uh, a lot of the decorations weren't up to what I had envisioned in my mind throughout the summer. Having that attachment um, and coming to terms with the practicality of 
the certain situation um, was really difficult for me to maneuver myself um, from that attachment. And so I think that um, definitely for me, I've learned that um, being discouraged um, is a very big motivating factor um, in the sense that um, I'm able to learn from the experience. Um, and really, I think I draw strength from everyone in this club in, in the sense that despite something not going my way um, or the way that I had hoped it would occur or whatever, um, just knowing and seeing you guys like interact with each other during Barrio, knowing that my Lynn and Brandon were going to get up there no matter uh, if I was like, I, on the day I even asked you, I was like, are you sure you guys are going to perform? You're like, no, we're going to perform. And having that and having all those assets <laughs> overshadow that discouragement, um, I think is one thing that I'm constantly working on um, and making sure that that, that discouragement is <laughs> overshadowed by the pros and assets of our community. And lastly, we'll have a question from Queen White. Um, earlier this year, you guys said that uh, this club is my legacy. Um, it kind of blew me away to have the word legacy attached to my name. Um, but I think as a president, you need a legacy. So what do you want your legacy to be as EFC president? For me, it would be uniting a greater community. Um, I've established so many relationships with so many groups of people, not only in our immediate school community, but in our greater community, community of Seattle, um, Northwest Fossa, all of that. And so for me, it would be awesome to see all of that come together. And what would that look like? That could look like, um, you know, pushing to do joint events or sacrificing our own events to attend others and support um, each other because that's what it is. We all share the same culture. We shouldn't be doing different things. We should be celebrating together. And if um, I get the opportunity to really spread that message and it hold true, then I think that would be um, really meaningful. I agree with Ian, um, but on top of that, I think that in order to reach um, the outside community, we all of us really need to um, identify ourselves with this um, this UFC community. Um, being able to say that you are a member of this family, um, being able to say that you can depend on each other as motivations and strength, um, saying that beyond meetings or beyond um, positional leadership, you guys are all one, um, is something that I really wanna leave on this, um, on this club. And one thing that I really wanna leave on this club is making sure that everyone um, has the ability to be the face of UFC. Um, honestly, president is gonna stand up, and I'm gonna. If I were to be president, I would stand up when I need to be. But I honestly do not think I can um, do all of your guys's uh, narrative or uphold all of your guys' narratives and do your guys justice. Um, so I think that everyone really needs to um, be able to say, "I'm a, I'm the face of UFC. I'm a leader in UFC, and I'm gonna represent this community because it's done so much to me, um, given so much to me, um, and being able to say that with humility." Um, being, being able to say that you have um, all these people in your club and you, they're your colleagues and they're, they're your partners, they're your, they're your partners in math class, whatever, you know, being able to say that that person um, is definitely um, what UFC encompasses. Um, I want you guys to be able to identify all of you as leaders of this organization. Thank you.